Hello everyone, I am Tacit, and today we are going to be going over all of the best soul rates in Gems of War as far as how much you can farm per hour, as well as just some of the basics for people who may not know uh, how to really be able to accumulate a lot of souls in a timely manner. So let's just go and go into what you do with souls. Souls are used to upgrade the level of your troops. Every single troop will at minimum be able to go to 15 if they're a common, and if they're ascended all the way to mythic, they will be able to go to the max level of 20. This is currently the only thing that souls can be used for, though there is a feature called Soul Forge, which is going to be a crafting system coming in next patch, and this is most likely going to be using the soul resource. So if it's, uh, the patch hasn't come out yet, as of right now, uh, you will likely want to farm up on souls so that you do have some for when it actually comes around. So, what exactly is the bonus that will be able to increase this? We have a couple things that will be able to do this. By default, it is at 100%, so there's 175% that I am getting as extra. The first one that you can do if you go under your hero and have an armor is to use an armor. You can use either the Death Knight or Celestial Armor for the max bonus. Uh, Death Knight Armor costs $50, the Celestial Armor costs 500 gems and can be obtained uh, as a free-to-play player. And the early game method, if you want to throw 50 gems at it, is the Assassin Armor. You can completely skip this if you wish but if you are impatient and only have 50 gems and still want to be gaining a little bit extra souls you can just go for this and uh, obtain it that way to be able to buy these armors you just go over to shop and go over to uh, armor uh, assassin armor is right there for 50 gems and celestial armor is uh, right there for 500 and death knight armor is 50 dollars under one of these things probably like one of these i don't exactly know uh, where it normally is maybe under specials or something Okay, and the last uh, little bit of that, the 75%, the other 75, if you go over to guild and then into guild, you're getting a maximum of 50% from your purple guild statue. This can range anywhere from about 5 to 50, depending on how high it's leveled. Every 10 levels, it gains 5% extra souls, and this does work absolutely everywhere, and it caps out at level uh, 100 uh, guild statue. Once you get it to level 100, it will be giving you the full capacity of 50%. And uh, to be able to upgrade this, you go to tasks. And in this general area right here, there is a purple task if you haven't already completed all of your tasks, which will allow you to be able to uh, gain EXP towards this statue. The last 25% is if we go over to VIP. Uh, you do get uh, extra resources from VIP. Uh, I currently have a 25% from having VIP 4, I believe. This is $70, I believe, that VIP 4, not quite sure. I believe it's exactly 70 though, and uh, that will uh, give the last 25% that I have. As a free-to-play player, currently the max you can possibly have is a 250% soul bonus. Most of these that I did calculate for the actual rate are based on my 275%, but the 25% isn't really going to be uh, that too huge of a difference. So, what are the actual rates? Well, when you're first starting out, Arena is going to be the main area that you're going to. You unlock Arena once you have completely finished out the Broken Spire Kingdom, and if you just simply click on this, you'll be into a arena draft, you'll just draft uh, a nice team. If you happen to draft a bad team, like uh, it seems like we already are, because all three of these picks are absolutely useless. Uh, if you happen to draft a really, really bad team, all you simply have to do is just uh, retire it, click the X, retire, yes, and then just click back. And it is definitely worth, even though you'll lose some gold every single time you do that, it is worth repicking until you get a good team. Uh, and once you have completed out the arena, assuming you do a perfect one run, you end up getting 1,200 souls. It may seem a little intimidating initially to be able to get all eight battles, but it's actually relatively easy since all battles are against AI. It's uh, once you kind of learn the game and understand the AI, it's uh, relatively easy to get the eight wins. And uh, you can do this about three times per hour, almost four times per hour if you are... Uh, uh, decent and happen to have a runic blade or some of the other weapons that work but on average you're going to be about uh, three per hour when you're first starting out it's about two per hour uh, when you're just a newer player this will average around three thousand souls uh, per hour uh, once you get Celestial Armor, which gives the 100% soul bonus, of course, that would increase to about 6,000. Uh, one other thing to note that does increase it quite a bit if you happen to get a decent draft that isn't uh, completely uh, horrible. 
Let's see, can we get a good blue? Can we get a good blue? And not a single good blue pick. Fail. But uh, let's just pick whatever. Uh, but if you do get a good draft, you can go up to hard. This only makes the stats 10% higher on the enemy, which is basically none. But you end up getting a 25% extra soul bonus. And of course, that's going to be 300 extra souls every single time uh, you end up winning out the uh, arena, which is quite a uh, hefty amount uh, extra to be able to get. And of course, that would end up being around 900 to 1,000 extra souls per hour using that hard difficulty but yeah on average as a newer player it's uh, 3,000 right off the bat then 6,000 once you get celestial and then uh, once you basically have the full setup for it which doesn't take too long uh, you would end up getting about a 10,000 soul rate but this is by no means the best possible way it's just when you first start off the best possible way is to utilize challenge there's two ways that you gain souls from challenge the initial way is just the uh, kill out the challenges when they don't have any stars this gives you a little bit of souls every single time uh, right here we are going to uh, upgrade our difficulty generally when doing the challenges for the first time you want to do them on the highest possible difficulty that you can because there is a soul crate on each one that you can only get once so i normally advise waiting until about warlord one at the absolute earliest to uh, start uh, doing uh, mass amounts of uh, challenges but you can do it pretty much uh, whenever if you so choose um, but doing it on uh, Warlord 2 or Warlord 3 would definitely help out quite a bit because they're only able to be done once every single one of these uh, for their crate. As you'll see at the end of this, we're going to get a large crate of uh, additional souls and give us our souls. And as you can see, we got 375 souls or 350 if you didn't have the extra 25% uh, that we have. And uh, it's normally best to upgrade the difficulty when doing that. And uh, that's what you do when you initially do all the challenges, but you can still farm out every single one of the challenges. So if we go over to the easiest challenge in the game, Scouting Party, um, this is where you will accumulate a good majority of your souls. So the teams that we use for this are quite uh, expensive as far as how many you could potentially use. Uh, but I will go with the absolute basic, most cheapest one, which is a Warlock, Warlock, Valkyrie, Warlock. You'll want to turn this down to normal or the highest difficulty that you can one-shot all of them. You may notice because there is a Ranger here, uh, he has 50%, so he's a bit harder to kill. If this is the case on any given week, you can go and find another kingdom. You can also do this if you happen to want to be farming a different trait stone at the time. But essentially what you want to be able to do is make sure your Warlock has enough damage to be able to one-shot all of these. One other thing that you should note is you it is 100% required to have the first trait on Necromancer. This gives you 50% extra souls per battle, and this does stack if you have multiple of them. So if you have three Warlocks, you're getting 150% extra. It is also highly advised to have the second trait, because this gives one extra magic for each blue ally, and since you will have three blue allies on your team, that will be three additional damage, and this will help make it so you can actually be able to one-shot them. For this particular challenge, you need 21. For the other one in uh, Divinian Fields, which is why it's the easiest one in the game, it only requires having a 19 max hit, though on a week that it has a bonus, of course, you will need a slightly higher max hit. So you either do it in any of the weakest challenges you can find. Divinity Fields normally is the easiest, but we'll do it for here for now. Uh, of course, lower your difficulty back down to normal or whatever you can one shot it at. Of course, you do gain a little bit more souls than 20,000 per hour if you do buff it up beyond a... Um, beyond uh, just the standard uh, normalish uh, difficulty. So right off the bat, we are just going to completely ignore every skull on the entire board. We do not need skulls whatsoever. And of course it won't give us the mana here, but uh, all we're looking for right now is reds and yellows. That's all we need. And uh, we'll just keep swiping them off the board. And then once we have our ability up, we will then go and cast this to get all of our manas. And at this point, we are still going to want to get the Valkyrie up one more time. One other thing to note is it is good to have a Valkyrie that can almost gain you up to max souls and two casts. Uh, it will sometimes take you three casts. If it does take you three casts, the amount of eeks or the amount of souls that you get per hour will be around 15,000-ish. Mainly because that will slow you down uh, quite a bit having to go 
for the whole additional uh, cast off of the uh, Valkyrie. So we just basically let it do uh, whatever, throw a Valkyrie just to get the uh, max amount of souls, and then we just throw the little taps uh, wherever we want, just get the kills, and that will be the match as soon as he decides to stop getting a bunch of extra turns. And uh, down it goes, and of course we've reached our max capacity of souls, all the necromancy trigger, and there we go getting our large amount of souls at the end of the battle, 275 or 250 if you didn't have the uh, VIP bonus. And uh, let's go to the other teams now. Uh, that is the absolute cheapest team that you can make within a uh, within early game to be able to farm souls. Uh, this could, if you don't have celestial armor and other stuff, could go as low as about 10,000 per hour. But that is still relatively high. 10,000 per hour was how many souls the max rate pretty much was uh, before 4 times speed exists. But now that 4 times speed exists, it is really easy to gain a very, very high amount of souls. So now the highest amount of souls that you can gain without using a Farish Ra. Farish Ra is the best thing in the game for farming souls. We'll be going over him in a moment. But let's actually go back to this one. Uh, for this one, you do have to make sure... Uh, well, you need a Dragon Soul, and you need uh, three Azuruses fully traded. Uh, obviously, stick with the Valkyrie Warlock if you cannot afford this. It is relatively expensive, actually, to go and uh, upgrade an Azurus fully traded, especially since this is about the only purpose that Az Azurus has, is for this exact team right here. But uh, do make sure, whatever challenge you end up doing at any given week, depending on what the bonuses are, that you'll be able to kill out the team with 22 damage. Dragon Soul, with no other dragons on the team, will do 11 damage to all enemies every single cast. And you need to make sure that they have 22 or less uh, durability on them, or they will not be able to die. Uh, but we'll just throw this down. And uh, as I mentioned, Divini Fields is normally the better option for this. The reason why you don't go for one of these is he does have a big right there, so there's a slight chance that he could end up healing uh, to a point where we won't be able to two-shot him. But hopefully he'll stay tame and he won't be able to get that extra turn. And good, he didn't get it yet. We do have an Azurus that we could technically throw if we want. Ideally, right here, we'd want to take a red or a um, purple. And perfect, we get a purple right off the top. Throw down the Dragon Soul, and down it goes. There's also a weird glitch right now where Dragon Soul likes to sometimes gain max souls. As you can see, we did not reach max soul capacity right there. We only reached 85 out of 100, but we still got the max of 275, which we should have gotten for this battle. Or not should, or we shouldn't, shouldn't have gotten for this battle. No clue why this happens, but this is one of the reasons why this is actually a 25,000 uh, rate right now. It would probably be more towards a 20,000 per hour rate, similar to the exact other team that we just used, if that glitch did not exist. But uh, generally, a Dragon Soul build, if you happen to have that, will be better than the Warlocks, uh, even if you happen to have it, mainly because your Valkyrie may have a much lower magic. Uh, to be able to do this effectively, you do need a Valkyrie. Uh, you can do it with a lower Valkyrie, but ideally you need a Valkyrie that does about 13 souls or more is the sweet spot for anything 13 or more. If it does anything less than that, Dragon Soul related uh, soul farming teams will be uh, better. Uh, you can also, if you don't happen to have the uh, the Azuruses to be able to back up the other team, you could basically combine both of these teams and simply use a um, Triple Warlock with a Dragon Soul uh, as your option. And uh, this will basically, you'll, the main reason we use Azuruses is because we gain extra purple magic, three to be exact, so we're getting plus five total. But uh, you can use the Warlocks if you need something cheaper, and you'll still be getting the full extra bonus souls, but you'll also be able to use the Azurus, which likely has a higher soul rate than your Valkyrie. So if you happen to be able to do that, that is also another option. So what is the absolute best soul farming in the game? Well, not PvP, but we will be showing that in a moment. Um, the absolute, absolute best is the Ferris Ra spam. Uh, most people will likely not be able to build this team once the crafting system eventually comes out. This will likely be uh, as soon as anyone... They're going to be doing the uh, Mythics likely on rotation as far as when you can get them. And whenever Ferris Ra comes on rotation, it will probably be a really good idea to get it. Because right now, souls, they kind of don't have too much of a value. Uh, they lose their value pretty quick. Um, gold is normally much more valuable than souls at the moment. But once the crafting system comes in, you may want to actually build this team up because it is pretty much double the rate. It can go as high as about 60%, even higher than that, uh, if you get uh, really, really, really good luck. But yeah, we're going to run this on a Warlord 3 with three Farish Ra's and a Valkyrie. You could do Warlord 4. I normally wouldn't advise it, because sometimes the board goes bad and you have to take Skulls, and uh, you won't really be able to take Skulls if you don't have uh, the uh, slightly lower difficulty. Also, you won't be able to one-shot them initially if you uh, up the difficulty, but... 
what we'll do right here is just simply throw a fair shroud. Just looking around real quick to see if there's anything we kind of need to get out the way. And uh, yeah, just throw down a fair shroud. Boom, one shot. And he will just one shot absolutely everything uh, very, very easily. And uh, there's not a single chance that you will not get max souls. It is literally impossible because you have to cast uh, Ferris Ra a bunch, and Ferris Ra gives you souls uh, every single time. So uh, yeah, just throw a Valkyrie cast into it, get your mana, and uh, just poke it out with a skull for the final. That's exactly why I keep it on Warlord 3 instead of Warlord 4, because if that was Warlord 4, we would not have gotten that skull kill right there. And as you can see, we're getting 825 souls. Not quite sure what that number would be without the 25%, maybe like 750, 775 or something. But uh, yeah, that is uh, quite a hefty amount of souls. And uh, you get 880, if I'm not mistaken, if you were to do that on Warlord 4 uh, with the full bonus that I end up having. Uh, but as I mentioned, it is actually more efficient to do it on Warlord 3 more often than not than it is on Warlord 4. Because many times you will have to go for that skull poke to be able to get that. But yeah, that is, uh, if you keep repeating that over and over again... Uh, approximately 50,000 souls per hour can cap out at about 60,000 if you uh, go extremely, extremely quick. But there are some other aspects that you can do. Of course, there is the whole entirety of uh, PvP. There are a couple teams that you can do for this. I'm not actually going to go into any battles at the moment. Most of you have already seen many of these builds uh, before. But uh, Gorgotha, Christinex, Dragon Soul, Christinex, or literally anything with Christinex, Dragon Soul, or literally any team with a Dragon Soul, uh, can cap out at about 5,000, or it ranges from about 2,000 to 8,000 per hour, as far as the souls, on average it's about 5,000, uh, it can vary quite a bit depending on what you're actually facing, what the meta is at the moment, and many, many other factors, PvP can be really random sometimes, you win some, you lose some, but on average, uh, just having a standard Dragon Soul on your team while doing PvP is a passive 5,000 souls per hour, this isn't a huge amount of souls, but 5,000 compared to zero is a lot more. Uh, that is a bit essentially infinite more since <laughs> zero is zero. So it's always a good idea to have a soul farmer on your team. This has been a concept that has almost been persistent since the game has started, ever since like a couple months after the game was released, over two and a half years ago. It has always been good to have soul farming troops in your team. Uh, you can also simply put a Valkyrie in your team, and that will most likely be anywhere from one to or one or two thousand, even if you're a newer player, all the way up to things as about the same rate as this, about five thousand uh, per hour, if you have the higher soul rate, like what we have on our uh, Valkyrie. One thing I didn't mention, which I probably should, if you're wondering how I have so much extra magic, because this was something that people have mentioned in the past, that I don't think I clarified as well the first time I ever made a soul farming video. But uh, if you go over to uh, Kingdoms, you might be wondering, like, wait, how? How do you have such a higher magic than, or how do I have such a higher magic than you? It's mainly because of kingdoms, uh, particularly the magic kingdoms, the kingdoms of Blighted Lands, Darkstone, uh, Zolkari, Kerkaroth, and uh, Silverglade. All five of these kingdoms give you additional magic for upgrading them. There's uh, 10 total magic, two per kingdom that you can end up obtaining. Uh, the first one you get from leveling up, um, up to level 10. There's a button right here if you didn't already have it at max level that levels them up. And uh, once you reach level 10, you get one additional magic for all five of those kingdoms that I mentioned. But there's also a way to get even more. If you happen to get uh, five gold stars, you'll be able to uh, level them up to get another skill bonus, which of course gives you a second extra magic. Uh, the easiest way to level things up will actually come to you as you do soul farming, which is pretty nice. Uh, and that is uh, leveling up troops gives a good majority of your points you as you can see here if you look at every single one of these numbers for any kingdom your levels will always be the largest ones out of all three of these you gain some from uh, getting troops you gain some from getting traits but the grand majority of them will be from leveling them and of course what do you need for leveling them souls so in passively gaining souls you would also be increasing your capability to be able to farm souls by eventually upgrading uh, these kingdoms to five gold stars so that's how I'm getting all that extra stat also just from ascending it to mythic but uh, that comes in obtaining cards uh, and then leveling them because their ca their level is capped at whatever they are like for example a valkyrie is a rare so its normal uh, level that can go up to is 16 but as you ascend it all the way to mythic it can go as high as level 20 and it does gain some amount of magic in between that not quite sure the exact amount i think it's like four or five uh, not quite sure but it does gain some amount uh, within that margin and of course uh, finally what is the best team to do in PvP? And I guess I could go do this, though, so for the sake of not being completely trolled, let's not do it against Farish Ra. Oh, come on. Not Scion either. Uh, something that's not Scion or Farish Ra. Okay, that's just as bad. No. <laughs> Please, people. Uh, Spirit Fox, that's just as bad too, but we'll do it. Okay. But uh, what is the best one for PvP? We have this one. It's just the exact same thing that's the best team in the game for soul farming. 
Um, if you don't have the Ferrish Raws, I honestly just suggest that you stick with any kind of Dragon Soul related team. Uh, that is the best if you don't have Ferrish Raws. Also, one thing to note that I didn't mention about this other team, which is the best that you can do, you can replace out Ferrish Raws for more Warlocks instead. Uh, every single Ferrish Raw, I'm not quite sure on the exact amount, but having another Ferrish Raw is approximately an additional 10,000 souls per hour. It's quite a huge, huge, huge margin. Uh, but it is about an extra 10,000 per hour per fair shra that you uh, add to your team. But you can uh, replace it out for Warlocks and just go for a partial bonus instead of the full bonus. Of course, you need them fully traded to be able to get that uh, final bonus, though. I don't think I actually showed that, but that was kind of implied. But uh, on his final trait right there, Necromaster, you do need that. That gains 150% soul gain. It's the highest soul gain uh, bonus that you can get in the entire game. And it will likely always be the highest that you'll ever have is on the fair shra. But... Uh, doing this in PvP is about 20,000. This is almost like a third of what the absolute best rate is with this team. Generally, you wouldn't really run this in PvP, but if you truly want to still gain PvP-related stuff while gaining souls, this would theoretically be the absolute best thing that you can use. Uh, I'm pretty sure these Spirit Fox are going to be ridiculously annoying, and yes, they are going to destroy our, uh, our Valkyrie, so for the, sake <laughs> for the sake of this, let me just dodge, and can we get something that won't completely troll us? Sure, let's go with this, though he does have pretty high stats, but this is a Ferris Rod team after all, and one thing good about a Ferris Rod team is we do have the capability to one-shot, and as you can see from that previous battle, this team is pretty inconsistent in PvP, which is why you never see me ever using it on streams and stuff like that. Uh, it's not really that viable to use in PvP unless there's a current week where one-shotting is actually really effective and there's not really many counters out. This week there's quite a bit of counters because of all the Spirit Fox and stuff. Spirit Foxes in particular uh, basically deny out our Valkyrie completely so we can't end up doing anything. And of course standard counters like Scion, Famine, stuff like that are also pretty annoying for this team due to the fact that it uses such a gigantic uh, first slot mana. So right here you can see that we basically have no option for our blues until those purples. Ideally we don't want to uh, do this on purple or on yellow. Those are the two colors that we kind of want to uh, keep on the board but if you absolutely have to it is worth uh, doing it. So right here we will go for a green, clear out a lot of the board. Still don't really have any redone alignment due to uh, what we just did the previous turn but we'll start poking down. Uh, we'll go for the biggest threat which is him doing a mass barrier onto his team and uh, then we just keep poking from there. So uh, let's go and get rid of the entangle in case we want to use skulls for whatever reason in case the battle does come to that. Uh, looks like one of our Ferris rods die. Oh one other thing to mention. Uh, Ferris Raw's effect does still apply, the uh, same as anything that has necromancy or anything like that, still applies even if it does die, so you don't really need to worry about any of your troops dying, uh, except for maybe the Valkyrie. Valkyrie is kind of important to not die because that will speed up the battle quite a bit. Um, but yeah, that's that, and even though we still uh, kill, got killed on a troop there, that is still the full amount. It might look like a little bit lower than before, but you have to keep in mind that the difficulty setting is not applied in PvP, but uh, yeah. That is still the uh, full amount, even though we lost our uh, one fair shra there. Um, and that is basically everything you need to know with soul farming. Uh, that's pretty much all the basics, as well as some of the more advanced stuff. If you still have any questions about it, definitely still leave all the questions. There are definitely other teams other than what I just showed. Those are just the commonly uh, or simple to build. Uh, well, they're just the they're just the ones that I normally recommend. I would say for soul farming. I know I've used the Warlock, uh, Triple Warlock Valkyrie on some of my other accounts many times, and uh, there isn't really anything better than uh, Valkyrie, Triple Fair Shra. Pretty sure most people kind of agree on that. Though you, some people do run it with a Dragon Soul. Uh, I personally don't. I find Val Valkyrie to be a bit better with it. But uh, yeah, that is everything. You still have questions? Leave them all in the comment section below, and I'll go and uh, answer all of them. Thank you all so, so much for watching, and have a wonderful day.